Hello and welcome to the next chapter in our ongoing series of tutorials that will help familiarize you and improve your skills in Corel Paint Shop Pro Photo X2 Ultimate. My name is Robert Corel. In today's short lesson I'm going to show you a few characteristics about the eraser such as size and hardness that you'll need to change to erase successfully around objects that you want to lift out of a photograph or if you're using a mask and you're trying to create the mask. This is a photograph of my Fender Stratocaster sitting in the backyard. I'm going to promote the background layer so I can erase around the guitar. You will want to do this if you're creating a collage or if you want to take a picture of anything and put it then in another photograph you're trying to erase around the background. Now you can't always use the background eraser if you like. However, it's not always going to work effectively depending on the background that you have. This is a pretty complicated background. It's not a smooth uniform surface. If the guitar were shot in a studio with a white backdrop, it would be pretty easy to just lift that out with the background eraser. Moving to the eraser now. I'm going to zoom into the fretboard and the guitar neck. Let's say we're trying to pull this guitar out of this photograph and use it on a web page or something like that. You want to erase around the whole guitar. The eraser has a size and a hardness. Those are the two probably most important factors you want to consider. Size is obvious. It's how big the brush is. Hardness affects the border between where you're erasing and then the rest of the image. So at a hardness of 100, if I click once, and zoom in, you can see that there are no semi-transparent pixels between what I erased and the photograph. If I lower the hardness to zero, a couple of things happen. Notice first of all that my cursor has changed. It's actually enlarged quite a bit. Second thing, if I come down just a little bit and click when I, you erase, the center is fairly fully erased, but then it blends in increasing opacity from the center out towards the edge of the circle. So if we zoom in, you can see a fairly fine gradation between what's erased and then what's completely solid. Oddly enough, that makes it easier, easier and harder at the same time. If you're using a brush hardness of zero as you erase and you're trying to get up to the edge of something, it's easy to kind of be over enthusiastic as you're erasing and get right up and over where you want to erase. On the other hand, if you're timid about it and you don't want to get anywhere near the edge because you don't want to eat up into it, then you leave quite a bit of border there that you've got to take care of later. So it's a balancing act when you're using the eraser between size and hardness. A lot of times I will use a fairly soft eraser and accept the fact that I have to come back through after my first pass, lower the size of the eraser, and either raise or leave the hardness the same and continue working and just eating that away until I come down fairly close to the edge where I've got a smooth blend between the guitar and where I've erased. I don't want a sharp jagged appearance but I haven't erased the actual guitar. Now you can start out like this and then continue to reduce the size of your eraser until you really get right up there to it. You've got the best of both worlds. So use those techniques as you erase around your objects, whether you're creating a collage or lifting them out of the existing background and using them for something else. That's it for this lesson. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.